So Anaheim one was pretty good, but I think St. Louis might have been even better. Actually, way better. So last night was round two of the 2020 Supercross season at St. Louis. A lot of good stuff happened. Things I'm very happy about. Some bad things, but overall, I am very happy with how last night went. I'll start with the 250s, and I'll start with who I think had the worst day that they could have possibly had, and that is Dylan Ferrandez. Man, everybody talks about Carmichael. Everybody says that his starts are his weak point, and yet again, he got a bad start. So if you look, he's like 16th going into the first corner, which that's never going to put you in a good spot. And then having that pretty gnarly rhythm section as the first section on the track, having a bad start's not going to put you in a good position, and obviously with him, it didn't. I know they say that it was Martin who got into Moseman, and then Moseman and Frandis collided, but it actually started with Hayes. Hayes got into Martin, and then it cascaded from there. Ferrandez was this close to hitting a tough block, which would have saved his night, I think, because he looked like he was in some pain. But I, I don't think there was any saving it. As DeCoster always says, you can't win the championship in the first couple rounds, but you can definitely lose it. And I think Ferrandez might have just lost it because he lost a lot of points and having these shorter 250 seasons, a regional series, one bad race will put you out. Hopefully he's not, but yeah, he probably is. And then I wasn't very happy with how he was riding, trying to unlap himself. He almost landed on heart ramped, which I thought was pretty uncalled for. He shouldn't be riding that hard. He should have just like maybe got in behind heart ramped and then just passed people with him. Ferrandis, terrible night. Somebody else that had another terrible night is Christian Craig. I don't really get it. Christian Craig just can't quite get through a Supercross season. I don't know what it is. He would be the last person that I would think would have problems because he doesn't ever look like he's riding over his head. He always looks like he's riding in his comfort zone, but somehow he always crashes super hard and then he is out for the rest of the season. So hopefully he's not out for the rest of the season, but bad night. Definitely a bad night for him. The three people who had, I think, a great night for each of them, Jet Lawrence, Justin Cooper, and obviously Austin Forkner because he won. Spoiler alert, Austin Forkner won. Jet Lawrence, this is this was probably the best race that he could have had. And I think this was a very important race for him because I think he learned a lot. I couldn't believe that he was keeping up with Forkner. Could anybody else? He looked really, really good. He didn't look like a rookie. He didn't really make any rookie mistakes besides, obviously, he jumped a little too far right, just like people were doing last week. And he got into a tough block. I always say, hey, Bill, tough block. And bent his rear brake. These guys wired tied their brakes so stuff like that doesn't happen obviously they need to do it a little stronger because it still happens before that i think he was doing a really good race if you look his first two laps when he was behind forkner going into that section before the finish he uh the fastest line was to hit that tiny little single and then do the first double and it was what double double triple triple single something like that and he was going single double And then he did two different rhythms. And I'm guessing that's what he was doing all night long and in practice because doing that first little double looked really gnarly. We saw Bogle crash there, so I think he was maybe scared to do it. But then once he got behind Forkner and he saw like, hey, this is what these fast guys are doing. I need to do this. Then he did it easy. Like it didn't look like a problem at all. I think this was a really good learning experience for him. I think he's probably going to win a race because he looked like he was keeping up with Forkner pretty much no problem until the later part of the race and then he made the mistake and obviously put him back pretty far I think fifth is still great for him that's where I put him in the championship I obviously put Craig in front of him but Craig might be out now depending on what his injuries are I don't know and then uh Cooper Justin Cooper I think he rode an incredible race too he didn't get the best of starts he was in around seventh in the first corner which he was right in front of the carnage with Ferrandez so I think he got pretty lucky there but last week I said that he looked like he was riding in his comfort zone and wasn't pushing too hard well this week he was definitely pushing he was pushing real hard he uh he knew he had to get to the front and get to the front fast and we saw that with his pass on Christian Craig which was one of the best passes if not the best pass of the night I think to have that kind of confidence in yourself and your bike 
to flat track that corner on the inside and still do that huge double, he was definitely feeling pretty good, I think. But, and he said this on the podium too, I noticed that in the middle part of the race, he kind of seemed like he backed off. I think it was right when he got into third, pretty much, is when he quit making up time on Forkner. And I think when you have just, you pass a guy and then there's another guy right in front of you, and then you pass a guy and then there's another guy right in front of you. When you have that and you're just passing people like crazy, it's a lot easier to push. And then once you get in front of somebody and then there's nobody in front of you, it's hard to keep that aggression going. And I think that's what caught him. Because I think he could have won the race, honestly, if he would have just kept pushing as hard as he was earlier. Or you can see in the in the times that once he gets into third, he doesn't really make up any time until the last maybe two or three laps is when he really starts pushing again. If he would have just kept pushing the whole time, I think he would have had a, a really good shot at winning. And I think he thought that too on the podium but definitely the best of the night in the 250 class was Forkner he was in the lead from start to finish that's what you got to do got the whole shot led the whole race rode nice and easy didn't ride over his head at all like he tends to do sometimes I didn't see him make very many mistakes if they if he did make any they were small didn't matter at all he rode exactly what he or he did exactly what he needed to do in order to win the race. He didn't let the pressure from Lawrence or even Cooper at the end of the race push him into a mistake. He uh rode nice and in his in his zone made it look pretty easy. I think the uh the 250 class was a great race. Uh sucks that Ferrandis might be out of the championship after that one cuz he uh I should actually I'm actually really curious of how far back he is in points now. So it looks like he's about 15 points back, which, what do you get? Three points over second for winning? He pretty much has to be first or second from here on out if he wants any shot at this championship, which is going to be pretty hard to do with this class. I think Forkner and Cooper, they are they look really good. 250s, great race. If you have anything that you saw uh, that I didn't say that was worth noting, let me know in the comments. I'd always like to uh, see what you guys have to say. But the 450 class, I think that's where the the real cool stuff was. So same with the 250s. I'm going to say who I didn't think had a very good race. The two Kawasaki boys, Tomac and Cincerillo, I think could have had a much better race than they had. Tomac's thing was, again, he didn't get a good start. He's kind of like Ferrandis. He's not known for his starts at all. And that's a weak point of his that he really needs to work on if he wants to win this championship because Roxon, Barsha, these Cincerillo, these guys that are going to be his main competitors in the coming races for the championship. They're always in the front, and Tomac's not, and those guys are just as fast as him now, it seems like. So Tomac needs to get his starts figured out and quickly, or else he's not going to have any hope in this championship. And it was weird, because every time they showed him, it looked like he was going super fast, like he should be able to blow by anybody. But if you look at his fastest lap, it was actually seventh out of everybody. His lap time was the seventh fastest. So he doesn't have that just insane raw speed right now and it's crazy too because I don't know if you noticed but the little section after the finish I didn't see anybody else doing this but he was tripling out of the corner and then doubling into the tunnel and it looked way faster than the normal what were people doing double double single or double triple looked way faster than that so Tomac needs to step his game up I think and then Cincerillo those rookie mistakes were showing up I think he should have known that he needed to really make his pass stick on Osborne and I think he just went went into it a little too early needed to find a better point to pass him because if you pass Osborne you better make it stick or else he's coming right back for you and that's exactly what he did since really should have known that should have maybe picked a better place place to pass and then not only that we don't know what happened at the end of the race it was probably just some little mistake but having these longer main events for him it's maybe going to be hard on him. Those last five minutes, they, he could start making more mistakes because he's not used to riding a track that beat up, riding a track that long, all that stuff. So Tomac Cincerello could have had a much better night. And then Osborne, I think he redeemed himself from last week. Obviously, last week he wadded in the heat and that he probably didn't feel very good in the main. So I'll give him a pass for, for that bad finish. But this week, I think he redeemed himself. It didn't look like he quite had just the speed to keep up with those guys, but he still looked really good. He rides a really wide bike, and these guys know that. 
That's why everybody was passing him like they were on the verge of taking him out, but not taking him out because they don't want to be dirty riders, but they know that's how they have to pass him to make it stick. Roxon did it. Censorillo did it, but then Osborne went right back at him. Tomac tried to do it. Didn't work because Osborne went right back after him too. And then I'm guessing, I think Tomac eventually passed him. Barsha did it too, I think, right? But these guys know that and they know that's how they have to pass Osborne. So I'd say that's good that these guys did that because Osborne looked really good. He looked really good. Webb didn't really show up. They said he's still sick, so he must be more sick than he was last week because he got a podium finish last week with being sick. So hopefully this uh, this bad result doesn't put him out of the championship. I think he's maybe still okay. The 450s is a much longer season than the 250s, so he's got that going for him. But could have been a better race. Who got third? Oh, they didn't show much of Anderson, but he got on the podium this week. I said last week that he was the only one that could keep up with Barsha and Censorillo, so it was good to see him back on the podium. His little smile that he had when he was on TV was freaking funny. (laughs) Um, And then by far the two best riders were Barsha and Roxon. I think they will every week, but this week for sure they put themselves in the best position possible to win. They got up front early. That's going to be hard to uh, contend with with these guys because they're always going to be up there. I didn't know that Barsha was sick leading into this race. I learned about that when he was on the podium. I don't know about anybody else if this was something that was known or not. He pulled a web from last week and somehow got on the podium with being sick. And again, with him winning last week, him getting second while being sick this week, Barsha is uh, Barsha's the real deal this season. He wants to win. He wants to win bad. But the main person I want to talk about this week and that road the best out of anybody in each class was definitely Roxon. They must have changed his bike setup from last week because I know on Instagram he put that his bike was too stiff at A1 and that's why he didn't do very good. So the sickness must not be a thing like I thought maybe it was last week because he looked amazing. He didn't look like he got tired at all. Rode so smooth, no mistakes, and there's one really big thing that I noticed. If you're ever at a national or at the outdoors, and you listen to Roxon, you can barely hear his bike. And that's because, I mean, he is a European, but he didn't used to ride like the Europeans, and he's starting to now. I think he's in a gear higher than everybody, which really frees up the bike and lets everything work the best that they can work. Nothing's all tight and wound up because you're such in such high RPMs. When you're in low RPMs like that, it just everything seems to work right, and it's easier on yourself too because your bike's not just hitting super hard out of the corners and it's all about momentum and not losing any of it. That's how Roxon was riding this outdoor season that I noticed. And on TV last night, I noticed that I couldn't hear his bike whenever he went by. And the few times that you could hear his bike, it seemed like he was in very low RPMs. So he's bringing that style to Supercross and I think that is a very good idea. I think that's going to help him a lot, especially on tracks like last night where it was starting to get pretty chewed and chewed up and beat up. He let his bike do what it needed to do by being in those low RPMs and just being nice and fluid and smooth. And man, he looked good. He looked really good. And I think that this was the perfect race for him to come back and win after his huge, huge crash. Because it would have been cool if he would have won last year when him and Webb were neck and neck going over the finish but I don't think that's how Roxon would have wanted to win I think he wanted to win like he did last night where it is in there's no doubt in anybody's mind that Roxon was the best on the night he had the fastest lap time out of everybody he had a huge lead going over the finish I don't think there's any arguing that anybody was faster than him and I think that's exactly how Roxon would have wanted to win his first race again and that's what he did I thought that was really cool. It was awesome seeing him be so excited, his wife getting emotional, his entire team getting emotional. This is pretty much what Supercross needs right now. They can finally sell the Ken Roxon comeback. Like, I know they want to. Could you imagine if he ends up winning the championship? Like I said in the preseason video that I did, this could be one of the greatest comebacks in all of sports if he can do it, which I think he can. He looked so good last night. 
right now the only person I see battling with him for the championship is Barsha and I just and I think that Roxon is stronger mentally and will be able to stay in this championship longer than Barsha can and I can't think of two people that I'd rather have battle for this championship which is awesome I'm so excited for that St. Louis was great 250 class was great great racing we still have a couple dudes in this championship Cooper and Forkner and then Roxon finally finally winning again after almost three years, is huge for the sport. Everybody loves him, so all the fans, everybody has to be stoked. If there's even one person that's not happy for him, that's ridiculous. Everybody should be happy for him because for him to go through what he did and then win is pretty awesome. So that's all I have to say about St. Louis. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you guys thought about St. Louis. If you had anything that I didn't say that you want to bring up, go for it. There's a lot of stuff that happened, and I'm trying to keep these videos a little shorter. Next weekend, the video probably won't come out on Sunday because I will be in Vegas next weekend. I'm going to the McGregor fight, so this may be a little late. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!